Hi there, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for January 17th, 2014. This week, we're going to talk about a very important topic. It is the concept of low price volatility. Let me begin by explaining what that is. The reason it's so important is because breaks from low volatility often imply that a market for a stock is trading on new information. So we need to understand what this idea of low price volatility is. It's really when a stock is in a sideways trading pattern where the price range, you know, how much price is changing over time, is compressing. So if the stock was trading between $7 and $10, and then a month later it's trading between 8 and 10 and then the next month it's trading between 9 and 10 we can say that the amount of price volatility is compressing over time. That is an important thing because <clears throat> when there's low price volatility, what it really means is that investors have come to some consensus about what the stock is worth. And most predictive chart patterns, so if you've ever studied chart patterns like ascending triangles, pennant patterns, rectangle consolidations, rising wedges, all of these patterns essentially show a movement from high price volatility to low price volatility. They're showing a process of the buyers and sellers coming to some agreement on what a stock's fundamentals are worth. Now it's very easy to see it, draw a line across the bottoms, draw a line across the tops on a chart, and if those lines are converging toward one another, then price volatility is diminishing over time. So here I've got an example, and this is an intraday chart. You can do this type of thing on, a, on an intraday chart, on a daily chart, a weekly chart, doesn't matter. The concept is pretty simple. Here we have a stock that's moving up in price. So in that time zone over there, at this left-hand side of the chart, we can say that there's high price volatility. Price is changing um, constantly, and then that's why the stock is trending. Then you see the stock go down for a little while and you've still got a fairly high level of price volatility because the stock is not going sideways. But notice on the right hand side of this triangle, the stock is going very, very sideways. The buyers and sellers have agreed that this stock is worth about $50.25. If I draw a line across the bottoms, I get that green line. If I draw a line across the tops, I get the red line. And notice that those two lines are converging toward one another. That tells me that price volatility is uh, diminishing over time, that consensus is being found between buyers and sellers on what the stock is worth. Now, the reason that's important is we, uh, if you follow the stock scores approach, you'll know that I always look for abnormal activity, like that bar right there. That candle stands out relative to this low price volatility. You know, for this time period, everybody agreed that that stock was worth between uh, 50, 20 and 50, 40. And it was a very narrow range. And then some buyers start coming into the stock aggressively right there. And that tells us that they have a reason to start to want to own the stock. And there again, you see another bit of aggressive buying. And there again, some more aggressive buying. And that is what starts trends because... The people that are buying out of low price volatility are accumulating the stock aggressively and it's likely that they're doing so because they believe in the fundamentals of the company. And as the stock moves higher, that's where we get our reward. So what I'm looking for as a trader is breaks from low price volatility that happen right there. And notice in this case what happens to the stock thereafter. All right, let's do our regular weekly market analysis. Here is a daily chart of the S&P 500. You can see we're in that upward sloping channel and really no sign of weakness. Now, for the month of January, we've more or less been going sideways. You know, if I was to typify the last few weeks of trading, it's been sideways trading. And we had a blip downward to start this week. The market came right back, bounced off of the upward uh, channel line in that price pattern. And so we remain in that upward sloping channel. We're in the middle of the channel. Um, my expectation is that we're probably going to meander sideways here for a little while. The buyers seem to be a little bit hesitant to act right now. But unless that green line is broken, I'm not going to be too worried about it. And if the green line is broken, that's only a very minor upward trend line. The longer term upward trend line, which kind of resides down around 172 or so right now, is not considerable downside. So I remain bullish, a little bit hesitant on the buyer side this week, and I think that that may continue into next week. But 
uh, long range picture is a bullish one. Now the Toronto Stock Exchange did quite a bit better than the S&P 500 and a good reason for that it was that money is starting to come back into the mining sector. Now the mining sector still has a pretty ugly chart. I think what we're seeing is people bottom fishing these stocks. There's some bargains out there from a fundamental analysis standpoint. And so they're buying them because they're oversold, but I don't really see signs yet that the market is optimistic about mining stocks. So I think you can nibble a little bit on some of these mining names, but I wouldn't be jumping into that market wholeheartedly yet because the momentum just isn't there yet, but that could change, of course. Now, treasuries have been rising for the last week or so, and that's a, I would say that's a positive overall because that means interest rates are going down and lower interest rates is good for the economy. Um, we're probably going to meander in this sideways range. You, I've drawn a horizontal line of resistance there just above 108, and I don't expect the market to get much higher than that in the near term. But at least the downward slide, which really look, was looking like we were going to really cruise lower on, on treasuries uh, to end 2013, that seems to have not happened. And so that's a positive for the economy and for the stock market. The uh, emerging markets uh, kind of grinding their way downward. I would say this is not a market you want to be in right now. It doesn't look particularly bad, but there's no sign of buyer enthusiasm there either. US dollar is basing. You can see that rising bottoms have formed. That's a sign that the buyers are getting a little bit more enthusiastic about the US dollar. It's a gradual process. I think this is a case where the US economy continues to be better than all the other economies. That doesn't mean that it's great. It just means that it's better than the others. And so money is starting to come back to the US dollar, but um, really not an optimistic chart at this point. It's just more or less a stable chart in the, uh, in the medium term right now. Gold, as I was saying, uh, for this year has actually been doing okay for this year. But in the big picture, I've drawn the downward trend line there, a couple of them. There's the steeper one, which we're going to probably test next week. And then there's the more shallow but more significant one, which is all the way up to 132 on the gold ETF, GLD. Um, I wouldn't get too optimistic about gold stocks, but you know, if you have 20 stocks in your portfolio, you could probably stand to own one or two. If you have 10 stocks, I wouldn't own more than one. The uh, oil sector bouncing off of support. Pessimism is really the order in the short term. If we took a longer term view of this chart, and that is a weekly chart going back three years, you'd see that oil is really just stuck in a sideways trading range, and it is at the bottom of that range where it should have pretty good support. So I am bullish on U.S. stocks in the uh, longer term, neutral in the short term. I think we might just take a pause here after some pretty good run-ups. Bullish on both the short and long term for Canadian stocks. Neutral on gold. Um, I do like what gold's been doing this year. It's an, a positive first step, but it still hasn't broken any of those downward trend lines, so it needs some work there. Neutral on oil, but a different scenario on oil. It's at support and is, should hold that support. I don't really see any great reasons to buy oil, the commodity, although that there is a fair bit of interest in the energy stocks, and so a lot of the energy names are actually doing pretty well. So U.S. stocks continue to trend sideways under resistance, but the long-term trend remains up. Canadian stocks are outperforming as they work to catch up to their U.S. counterparts. Gold stocks have been heating up lately, but will soon encounter long-term resistance at the downward trend line, so take with it a little bit of caution on those. Oil has good support, but is not showing much optimism longer term. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for January 17th, 2014. Have a great week in the market and trade well.